So it's been a long time since I made a manga center video. About two years, in fact. Bro is not Tyler. And it's about damn time I break the streak and feed y'all some of that good shit. Especially in this case, as you see with the length of this video. I wanted to step outside my shonen doo-doo brain mindset and give something new a chance. Something that's highly disrespected by niggas that won't even bother giving a chance. Something that could high-key change my life and broaden my taste after reading it. Something that could high-key become one of, one of my new favorites, honestly. And that something is B-Stars. I already see niggas in the comments now. Man, what the fuck? I know he ain't reading this furry shit. I came here for Tyler the Creator and anime. Specifically, cool anime. Not this furry low bullshit. Channel reported. Fuck, nigga. Firstly, low your voice talking to me. Secondly, look, man. Ain't nothing wrong with trying new things or furries. Because them niggas got bread. And I'd rather not be for niggas that could buy my entire family twice over. Seriously, though. Beastars is something that's always been getting clowned on for years. Because furries and i'm not gonna lie and say i ain't laugh at it or make jokes at its expense because i have but throughout that time throughout all those jokes i've always had a little bit of curiosity on my mind on what those freaky ass animals got going on especially after seeing some clips my curiosity just couldn't help itself and now it's finally reached its peak in this video i'm gonna binge read the entire beast stars manga and give my thoughts and opinions on it and analysis on each arc my overall thoughts on it how good it is how bad it is even and just what I like about it and what I've missed out on all these years. And at the end, when I finish talking about a specific arc, I'm going to give my rating from it from 1 to 10. And after I finish ranking all of the arcs, I'm going to rank them from worst to best. Just to make the video a little bit more spicy and interesting so you stay till the end. And oh yeah, if you haven't guessed it already, spoiler alert, my nigga. Duh. Well, you should have been said that. First thoughts after reading chapter 17. It's safe to say that a nigga is hooked. I can already see the beauty. The messages in this story and how it all unfold later the character dynamics and societal differences slash hearts are laid out so well and authentically the dynamics of herbivores and carnivores feels like an amped up zootopia yes i had to make the zootopia reference i just had to but surprisingly it doesn't feel shoved down my throat and i feel the school setting really helps with the authenticity of it since these are some dumbass kids they do and say dumbass things and just like in real life kids are mean as hell and that's no different here these motherfuckers are ruthless to each other Especially considering that a nigga died in the first chapter, which helps set the tone of how potentially serious this story can get. Because hey, niggas can and will die or get hurt in this bitch. So be on the lookout. Plot of this arc is a little dull though, to be honest. But wait, listen, listen. While it might seem a little dull, it's executed so well to where I'm still locked in and engaged enough to see how everything pans out. And when I say everything, I mean everything. This shit is a fucking theater play. We're building up to a theater play. These niggas are in school for real. The build up to the play was really good due to how well it was built up. And I mean built up by Louis, who I'll get to shortly, who emphasized the severity of him needing to be literally perfect in the play. Going as far as to attend every single practice and perform in the play on a fractured foot while in excruciating pain, to the point of passing out immediately after he showed that the curtains are closed. And with that, I have to talk about the... <laughs> Within 17 chapters, this series already has some layered as characters, dog. I already talked about the world itself, but I can't stress enough how good the world building is because it sets up the characters perfectly, and that's what makes them so amazing. Firstly, you start off with the deer king himself, Louis. As a herbivore in this world, specifically a deer, it's normal, even expected, to be pitied and looked down upon and treated as a small little baby, and Louis hates that feeling of being looked down on just because he's a deer is genuinely disgusting to him dead ass the first thing this nigga asks when he wakes up after passing out is if anyone in the crowd saw him fall because the thought of someone especially multiple people seeing him be a weak little deer all the expectations in the world on him actually so weakness is a death sentence for him and that's what makes him take a liking but while also hating Lugosi. Lugosi is the complete opposite of louis while louis hates being looked down on Going out of his way to make sure that doesn't happen, Lugosi purposely makes himself look weaker on purpose, being a very soft-spoken type of nigga that doesn't talk much unless spoken to or given a reason to speak. A nigga that hates confrontation, so much that he literally starts strategizing ways that he can lose a fight on purpose without hurting the other nigga. Hell, even walking with his head down and back hunched over. Just anything he could do to make himself seem small and hide what lies within him. And from what I've seen so far, it's getting harder and harder for him to contain it, because as a carnivore, it's so easy for him just to give in to his true nature as a wolf, as a predator. He uses large stature to his advantage to get whatever he wants, but he doesn't. He makes himself weak on purpose, and that's what irks Louis, but it's also what draws him in. 
and that's what draws the curiosity to Lagosi because he knows his game because in the opposite way he's doing the exact same thing and the one person who can see through a liar is another liar and that shit's just fire riding bro the last character i want to yap about is the bunny baddie herself Haru. the bunny what not too much nigga we're both 18. anyway haru i feel is the most complex character out of the three she's as small as her before there a little ass bunny and to make up for that in her mind is physical intimacy aka sex as that's the only real way for someone as small as her to feel genuinely equal to someone without being pitied on that's why she tried to make a move on Lugosi so soon. And that's why she was so confused when he denied her freakiness. Because that's not what he wants out of her. In his own words, he just wanted to talk to her. Basically seeing her as a regular animal with feelings and not a quick fuck. He even throws a blanket on her to cover himself before he dips out the garden. My nigga got manners. And we respect women round here, nigga. There's obviously more to her character, but for now, that's all my black ass can must do. Him. Plus, I'm trying to see how her and Louis vibe together. All in all, for her intro arc, I'm hooked. And I'm excited to see what happens next after this. Overall, I'm giving this a calm little 7 out of 10. Nothing too crazy, nothing too crazy. Now, on to the... Holy shit. The way this arc locked the fuck in was insane. I was vibing with it beforehand, and it seemed like it was building to be kind of bittersweet and lame. But boy, was I wrong. Literally everything in this arc ramps up and improves tenfold from the Drama Club arc. So first of all, I got my wishes granted while I want to see how Louie and Haru vibe together because the immediate next chapter after the ending of the Drama Club arc is them fucking passionately. Let me get Haru out the way first. Since I did ass pretty much hit her entire character right on the fucking mark with how she views sex as being truly equal to people due to how small and pitying on she is. But somehow sex is the only way she feels equal to another animal. Thankfully, Lugosi changed her mind on that a tiny bit and denied her advances of sex. In turn, Making her realize that she's more than just a sexual object. She's a person, animal with feelings. And Lugosi making her realize that is what draws her towards him. Instead of completely dismissing him and focusing on Louis. Speaking of Louis, we learn a lot about this nigga in this arc. Backstory wise, this nigga was a caged fawn among others waiting to be sold to whoever the fuck. And by the grace of God, Louis was bought by a rich nigga that couldn't have kids. And decided that a back alley orphanage was the next best plan. Immediately after adopting Louis, before these niggas even get off the fucking premises, he gives this nigga a shank, throws him in a room full of starving carnivores, and says nigga fight, fight for your ass. You know what baby Louie did in that situation? Tried to kill himself, which honestly, if I was in that situation too, same dog. But that's what the dear dad wanted, someone with a mindset worthy enough to continue with his lineage and change the world. Basically being the catalyst for the huge expectations Louie carries on his shoulders today. Because from childhood, it was literally do or die, boom or bust success or nothing and you can see his shell start to crack a little bit even after pulling a gun on a nigga after he told louis he knew his background about being from the slun now to lugosi the battle within himself was written perfectly because you really can't tell if he likes haru or just wants to eat her because he's never really felt this sort of intimacy with a girl so the first encounter with haru where she had tried he word tried to give him that snappy nappy dugout and it wasn't until he saw her and louis together where he truly came to the conclusion that he was in love with her side note i saw the love triangle story coming but i somehow didn't hate it and that just goes to show how good of a writer miss paru is because i didn't it didn't feel forced or stupid it feels like shit i could see happening to a nigga in real life i'm speaking from a slight bit of experience there and lugosi's last interaction with louis in this arc is perfect because it sets him off and destroys the love triangle as when haru got kidnapped and louis reluctantly agreed with the creepy ass mare to sweep it under the rug in order to protect his own lion kind lugosi straight up tells louis she's mine and goes full steam ahead to save her knowing and knowing he doesn't have the courage to save her for himself and seeing that lugosi does he tells him to go save her not for himself but for lugosi's own sake and even coming in clutch later on and saving Lakosi by killing the leader of the lion yakuza and yes i said lion yakuza aka the shishigumi the shishigumi are the yakuza of the verse and they steal small herbivores to feed to their boss now fortunately for haru she's just the right time for that nigga and gets nabbed up and it's very uncomfortable seeing this poor rabbit being inspected before she's eaten alive i'm dead as shivering like she was but what follows is probably the best scene up to this point in my opinion and it's her internally writing her will as she's dying recounting her life the way she uses sex to feel equal to other species being sad in the fact that she really hasn't discovered her worth in life and what her purpose is she mourns the fact that no matter how much she loves louis he'll always be out of reach due to status of species 
everything in her life up till now she regrets except for one thing the one positive spot in her life a paul starts to help her write out her will it's lugosi the one bright spot in her regretful and meaningless life the one animal who took her seriously and that gives her the guts to take pride in who she is for once in her life on the brink of death she throws her fear to her side and stands proud god damn nigga then there's the panda gohan who basically serves as a test and reminder of where lugosi's instinct could lead him if he truly isn't in love with haru and just wants to eat her he saves lugosi after passing out in the back of the slums and gives him a reality check the fact that a predator's instincts are dangerous as hell that the thirst for me can lead to a fate worse than death and that it's safer to just leave haru alone than to keep pursuing her he makes it clear that he's genuinely wants to help lugosi due to how young and naive he is when he finds out Lugosi is going to save her from the Shishigumi, he does not hesitate to help my nigga out and helps Lugosi channel his inner predatory instincts to protect himself, aka use them for good, leading Lugosi to ripping out the Shishigumi leader's throat. Literally, like he bit into that nigga's throat and ripped that shit the fuck out. Off script, this nigga is cold, bruh. Back to go in. How can you not fuck with this nigga, bro? While helping Lugosi, he tells him to go save Haru. I'm gonna go sit out here with these lions and fuck them up, and then proceeds to pull an assault rifle out of his ass. Then there's Juno, and look man, I'd be lying to you right now if I said I didn't want her and Lugosi to get together man. I mean, look at her bro, he's a grey wolf just like my goat, she's in the drama club, she's a dancer, and has b-star potential, and wants to change the world in favor of carnivores. I mean Lugosi, just ghost Haru and lock in. Seriously though, Juno is adorable despite her getting in the way of Haru and Lugosi. She's sneaky, but not outright mean. Yes, yeah, she is. Look, man, I don't know what it is about her, but she just doesn't come off that bad to me. Like, imagine Mommy from Red or Girlfriend, but it's likable and stood on business. And of course, Lugosi and Haru's time together in the hotel was heartwarming. A bit awkward, though. But what can you expect from these niggas? Lastly, the Meteor Festival itself and seeing Lugosi go after Haru, even after Juno tried to cut them. They'll never make me hate you. Then Lugosi running after Haru to see her and tell her that there isn't a chance in hell that he'll ever eat her. And then of course, him saying that he wants to get stronger for her so she could be happy and live happy with him with her head held high and that he loves her. She ain't say it back, but he loves her. All in all, my nigga, this arc was gooder than a bitch. The side characters Bill and Alba was interesting. The plot itself was engaging, especially in the later half. Like, holy shit, what do you mean we gotta take down the Yakuza? The emotions and stakes were real as hell. The comedy was hilarious and endearing when it needed to be without ruining the mood or tone. The art itself was, as usual, really good. With my favorite panel in the series at this point being in it, and a lot to look forward to in the next upcoming chapters. Like, how the fuck is Haru and Lugosi gonna move forward? What's Juno's next plan to steal Lugosi? And what the fuck happened to Louie? Front to back? I'm thinking this is a 10 out of 10 arc. Screw it. I dare you to say something about my raids in the comments. I dare y'all. I'll really reply to your ass. Because unlike Tyler, I got time, bitch. Now on to the next arc. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. After this arc, I don't know if I want to pick the bear anymore. I did think I could feel more fear and tension during this series after dealing with the Shishigumi, but not only are those niggas back, Haru basically snatched my skinny ass up, then locked me in a room with the murderer for 49 chapters and told me, good luck, nigga. This arc deals with finding out who really murdered Tim, the alpaca from the beginning of the series, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't almost forget about the nigga, but I'm glad that the story reminded me. And it keeps the realism intact because if the police stops working on a murder case at a school, the students that go to the school every day definitely not finna forget. Some niggas might have taken matters into their own hands, and in this case, Lagosi is niggas. La Glorious King's resolve and determination reaches an absolute high in this arc. After saving Haru, it wants to get stronger for that, not only to protect Haru, but to find out who killed Tem and to bring them to justice. Luckily, my goat. The panda god himself, Gohan, is here to help him train. And any excuse for more Gohan screen time is an automatic W for me. And thankfully, we learn about him in this arc. When he's introduced, you get the feeling that he just might be a hack or someone that has ulterior motives. But this arc disproves those suspicions to the point where you have to apologize for even thinking that he was a, a bad guy in the first place. You learn that he genuinely wants to help other carnivores beat their predatory instincts and live a better life. You can tell that he really does care about Lugosi and wants to help him become stronger. You can tell that he isn't in this for personal gain. He genuinely does this shit for the betterment of carnivores. The nigga even sacrificed his wife and kids for this job. 
due to how dangerous it is and he doesn't regret it because he knows how meaningful his job is to carnivores my nigga is literally a back alley doctor i don't know how i didn't make the persona 5 reference sooner her relationship with lugosi is a little bumpy in this arc but that's literally due to the fact that they're a completely different species and with how literally lugosi is she literally admits out loud that he's too weird even for her like damn he cannot match this nigga's freak also she misses louis but not in the i want him more than you kind of way more than the, I just want to know if this thing is alive or not type of missing, which is understandable. But then there's her finally saying with her chest that she loves Lugosi, which, aww. Juno also grows a lot in this arc and realizes the error in her thinking from before after spending time with Haru. And realizing that her before's aren't really that bad. They're actually stronger than carnivores at their core. And it makes her question if she could truly be a B-star. Louis is back, but then this nigga immediately resigns from school. Why you ask? Because he's the boss of the Shishigumi now. This nigga murked their leader and then became their leader. Ice cold, I tell you. He finally saw how corrupt the world truly is thanks to the mayor that he talked to earlier and decided that in order to change the world himself, he needs power. And where else could he get some real power other than the gang full of lions? A sends 10 toes on his decision. Until Lugosi comes back into his life, his determination and resolve to find Tem's killer and bring him to justice in his own way is where fi Louis finally snaps back to reality and decides to abandon the Shishigumi and save Lugosi at the last second, at the cost of a reliable bodyguard. RP my nigga Ibuki, you will be missed, King. And then there's Lugosi. He goes through a lot this arc. He beats the need for meat, kinda. The downside to that though is his jaw got weaker, but his overall strength got better. Now to the killer. The buildup wasn't that crazy, but boy was it stressful. Lugosi basically name dropping Tem out of nowhere at random moments while around the other carnivores and skimming up ways to decide who did it was engaging. And then the moment where this nigga arm gets rips off by accident. Off script side note, that shit was genuinely shocking because it happened out of nowhere. Like it happened in the background of the panel. You just see it happen. It's so, it's so crazy. The payoff was really beautiful though. I love that moment. Anyway, Lugosi and another student, a bear, takes them to the ER. And then once Bill the Tiger recounts and realizes Lugosi and the bear were awfully calm when that nigga arm got ripped off, he comes to the realization. It's one of them. We cut right back to Lugosi and the bear in the ER. And Lugosi straight up goes to bro's face and says, What's up with you, huh? He recounts how he took a bit of saliva from him when he beat him up from earlier to deter him from continuing the case and analyze it from the other carnivores' water bottles that had their saliva on it. And the dead giveaway that gave this nigga away was a crumbled up water bottle in his locker. Basically a warning, a stay the fuck away from this case and me or I will kill you. Immediately after this nigga's like, yeah, it's me, I did it. Lugosi squares up with him. But then we very shortly realizes that the strength difference between these niggas is horrifying. The name of this strong ass bear is Riz. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Every single moment after the reveal where this nigga is just freely walking around and about is terrifying because you don't know when you'll see a scary ass pop up. It doesn't help that he's fucking huge and takes up a good amount of panel space whenever he's on screen, just adding to his intimidation. The low voice and calm demeanor he has when he makes threats hits that much harder. His beady eyes and deadpan stare just shin sock waves down to my soul in the best and worst way possible. And whenever he snaps, all hell breaks loose. His overwhelming strength is genuinely petrifying to see unfold whenever he and Lugosi fight because every time these niggas did fight, Lugosi never made it out unharmed because Riz was just that much physically stronger than him. And that was just Riz physically. I didn't even talk about this nigga's psyche, which is a whole nother bag of potatoes. In short, this nigga is not okay in the head. Like at all. At first, this nigga seems completely apathetic to the fact that he ate Tem, but we realize deep down he really does feel something for him. He really does feel empathetic to it. But the act of eating the only person he ever shared a bond with was so traumatizing to him that he became delusional. Delusional to the point of thinking that Tem consensually wanted to be eaten. Thinking that Tem wanted to be eaten to show how close they were, to show how strong their bond was. And with that in his head, he lives freely, with no guilt at all, no stress on his soldiers, using his chill and calm demeanor to shroud the guilt and live life unbothered by his actions, coping with the fact that he killed Tem. And it isn't until the final fight with Lugosi that he finally comes to terms with himself and what he did. And it's also in the same battle where Lugosi realizes that he could have ended up just like Riz. The only difference is that he had people around him to keep him from going from the edge. The final battle itself was also really good. Louis leaving the Shishigumi like I said before and giving his foot to Lugosi in order to give him the strength he needs to fight with Riz. Riz and Lugosi duking out, berating each other with ideals before Riz finally comes to his senses and it's just great dog. Me and my go get ragdolled was not good however. But Paro somehow made me feel bad for this nigga, which I didn't think I could feel bad for someone I was scared of. But hey, that's just good writing. 
you can't really not feel bad for Riz because he genuinely did not mean to kill Tim. Like imagine if you had no friends due to being born bigger and stronger than everyone else. So you're legally obligated to take government mandated medicine that makes you weaker physically and mentally, gives you frequent headaches and makes it hard for you to sleep. But you find a friend that wants to connect with you and to connect with them, you decide not to take your medicine. And then the one night you don't take your medicine, all of your repressed, uncontrollable, predatory instincts come out and you accidentally devour the one and only friend you ever had. Hurts, doesn't it? Overall, I'm feeling a light 8 out of 10 on this arc. Not a bad follow up in the slightest. And with the ending, you can bet your ass I'm excited to see what happens next. Like Lagosi now having a criminal record and deciding to drop out, no Kanye. Juno now having a new mindset next to Haru. Louis. Just Louis. And who the fuck is his horse? And do they have good intentions with my goat? All that will probably unfold in the next arc. Hey, what about Pina? Oh, yeah, Pina. Yeah, he's cool. This was a really good breath of fresh air, dog. I cannot lie. After all the gang shit and tension we went through in the last arc, Peru decided to give us a slice of life arc, and I couldn't not enjoy this arc. Every second, I was either saying, aww, or wow, or even what the hell in certain sections. Seeing Lugosi navigate through his new adult life, explore new places, and meet new people, even whip some ass here and there while still learning about himself and his relationship with herbivores, reaching a new type of love and appreciation for him, it's great, man. This manga is just fucking great. Seeing Lugosi get along with his neighbors, especially Seabun, and have a positive effect on them, it's just heartwarming. Like, most of this arc is just good vibes. And then we meet Lugosi's Komodo dragon grandpa, who's a fucking badass. Like, this nigga is strong as shit, and he's even stronger in his prime. The only reason this nigga isn't still whooping ass like he used to is the fact that he's used to the discrimination he gets as a reptile, so he takes it on the chin. Plus, just like me, my nigga was a lover. So he gave up on that life. Become a family man. You can't be mad at that. Unless you're this nigga. Yaya the horse from earlier was actually a good guy. And was good friends with Gosha. Lagosi's grandpa. They were partners in crime. Whooping ass and stopping crime side by side. They were so good and effective together. That they were both candidates to become the next B stars. But like I said. Gosha gave it all up to have a family. And that destroyed Yaya. So much that 30 years later. He still holds somewhat of a grudge. Even as a B star. Because to him. His best friend basically abandoned him for some move, and he later takes his anger out on Lagosi. Speaking of Lagosi, Yaya sees a lot of potential in Lagosi since he learned about his fight with Riz, his stance of herbivores, especially as a grey wolf, and the fact that he's Gosha's grandson. So he takes a natural kind of like the nigga. Haru is still her old, lovable self, and near the end of the arc, she goes out of her way to connect with Lugosi more and try to understand this nigga and love him even as a small little rabbit. It's just amazing, man. And then his friends still going to see him at his apartment every now and then and still be on good terms with them is heartwarming. Overall, this arc was really short and sweet, only being 23 chapters long. And I'm glad it was because it was such a chilling, fun read, especially as an 18 year old going out of high school and trying to discover more life and get out of my comfort zone and make a living for myself. And especially as a nigga that just recently got back in contact with his grandpa, makes this arc way more relatable to me. So with all that in mind, I'm thinking a strong ass 90, I'm not gonna lie to you. I just love this arc front to back. The only real issue to me was that there was barely any Louie and go ahead and screen time. But this next arc might grant my wishes. Cause since this shit is 72 chapters long and it's the finale. So hopefully, hopefully the series ends on a high note. See you soon. All right, look, man, before I get to this final arc, man, this far, and you like what you see, you want to see more from a nigga like me? Not from like me. From me, specifically? Like the video, man. And subscribe. Please, it'll mean a lot to me. If we get to 5k before the end of the year. And we halfway there. Because trust me. Trust me. I'm more than one to put in the work to get there. Now. Shameless plug aside. What a way to go, my nigga. I'm barely awake while writing this part of the script. But best believe I still got a good enough amount of brain power. To fully digest this and take it for what it is. A bright step forward into the future. A right step in the direction for all species, carnivores and herbivores. And I love that. I loved how the theme of unity was really pushed and emphasized here. The blackout scene where carnivores and herbivores are holding hands to each other. The scene where the carnivores start destroying the back market to show herbivores that they truly don't want to eat them for selfish gain and that they can't control it. Louis himself telling the world to open their eyes and look at the carnivores suffering 
face the reality of the world and how easily it could change if we didn't ignore it. Yaya and Gosha recouping their friendship after all these years and Yaya finally understanding and coming to terms with Gosha's choice. Pina visiting Riz and Juvie even after all the shit he did to them. Juno coming to terms with the fact that she'll never really be with Louis, but still leaving him on a good note. Cheriton Academy going back to interspecies mixing after being segregated for a bit. Go ahead, moving up in the medical industry was nice. Louis' dad finally showing his affection for him in his last moments before he died. Lagosi fighting the gang leaders on equal terms and keeping his morals straight until the very end. Haru finally admitting that they are in fact dating. And of course, of fucking course, I can't forget the most beautiful scene slash chapters in the entire manga arguing with a wall Lugosi talking to his mom and finally seeing the tragedy of her character and why she did what she did I can't put into words how incredible and beautiful and heartbreaking this moment was but I'm gonna do it anyway Lugosi's mom Leona was always focused on outer appearances and what others thought and being born from an interspecies couple didn't help that in the slightest but she could get away with it since she didn't have any outer indications of being a mixed breed and she loved that and made her feel comfortable in her own skin she could live normally without scrutiny for being not a pure red wolf but all that came crashing down when she started growing scales on her skin she was able to hide them at first but soon the scales grew and they grew and grew she was so scared that before they got bad enough she had sex with just a random gray wolf so that Lugosi could not be a mixed breed he wanted that so bad for him to be a purebred wolf because he didn't want him to go through what she did. After that, they just got to a point where they couldn't be hid anymore. You could easily see them at first glance. Hell, you could see them if in the corner of your eye if you had good peripheral vision. And she couldn't bear the weight of it. And she couldn't bear the weight of the ghost having to grow through it either. She hid herself in her room all day, all night, for weeks, becoming a total recluse. Until one day she just couldn't take it anymore. She didn't want to go through this pain anymore. She didn't want Lugosi to go through it either. But on one fateful night, she left the room, went to Lugosi's room, and while he was sleeping, she gave him one last long hug. Soon after that, she left and took her life. You know the worst part? Lugosi was wide awake when his mom came to hug him. He wanted to move. He wanted to see her. He wanted to say something, but he didn't. Because he knew that's the last thing she ever wanted. He knew that she just couldn't bear the thought of him seeing her in the state that she was in. So he stayed completely still. Before Lugosi wakes up out of his coma, Leono has one last wish for him. One last thing to say. Live his life happy, unlike she did. To live with his grandpa and be happy with his grandpa. To be proud of who he is, a mixed breed wolf. And to be stronger than any purebred wolf out there. To live life happy and proud of who he is no matter what now after all that it hurts me to say this but this arc wasn't perfect far from it to be real because it's got hella flaws that i could not let slide like i could live with going not being in the dropout arc that much but not here too hell no me and my nigga was just in his office chilling while a wild hybrid was out there going crazy in the black market you mean to tell me he ain't come out while the black market was being destroyed? You mean to tell me he didn't come outside to see Lugosi fighting for his life? Because I know he heard the shit. He had to. He prepared. Hell, we don't even see his reaction to Kyu's note. Which, speaking of, Kyu just kind of exists. They have this plot point where she betrays Lugosi and stitches on him to the main villain of the arc for money. I say betrays in quotations because this shit ain't lead to nothing. And then she gets kidnapped by the Shishigumi and they were going to use her as bait to get Lugosi in a bad spot. But then that doesn't go anywhere either. So she's literally just there. Besides her training arc with Lugosi, she's just there. Speaking of the Shishigumi, they got to go on a lame ass note. I get that was the purpose. Shut up. I still didn't like it. Near the ending of the final fight, she was just kind of happening. And the dialogue was just kind of boring, my nigga. Because it got to the point of just, okay, nigga. Can you wrap this shit up? Because he's obviously not going to change. And then there's the final antagonist, Mr. Melon himself. I'm not going to lie. He was kind of underwhelming. Riz set the bar high as hell for how good an antagonist could be from an aura and writing standpoint. And seeing that we were getting an outright villainous arc, I was excited. But in the end, I just wanted a bit more out of this nigga. Not to say he's bad, because he's far from bad. He's a good ass antagonist. He does a lot of shit out of nowhere. And it's cool, it's crazy. It's tension filling. It's engaging. But he could have been great. And that's just depressing. 
he's not bad but he's not great either he's good decent but not oh my god like i i just didn't care about him enough and maybe that's just a me thing but it's still depressing nonetheless all in all i'm not mad at this ending at all by the time i read the final panel i had a nice little grin on my face because i'm glad it ended the way it did now could have been better definitely because the last few chapters seemed a tiny bit rushed i'm not even gonna lie to you but what this is looking on the bright side for a finale i'm putting a good 7 out of 10 which means my ranking from worst to best for each arc is the love failure arc drama club arc the dropout arc the murder solution arc and that leaves the meteor festival arc at number one argue with the fucking wall if you got a problem with my ranking come see me about it nigga in the comments after god knows how long finally done with this fucking video what the elvis say in that movie the bi the fucking biography from all the dreams i ain't got no magic left <laughs> Did you work on this video? I put on these all-nighters. I need to need a beautiful dark-skinned woman with a nice juicy fupa to jiggle my ball or some V-Bucks. But besides that, this video was genuinely fun to make and it was genuinely fun to see finished all the way through, bro. Just trying something new and loving this shit was amazing, bro. I I can't wait to make more shit like this. Trying out more manga, more things, and give my first thoughts and reaction on it. If y'all love that too, let me know. Trust, just let me know. Quick little shout out to Course, as always, the homie Mars. He's, he's, it's the homie Mars. That nigga's always getting a shout out. I love him. Shout out my nigga Cupid. Shout out Shine. Shout out June. Shout out Kells. Yeah, I got nothing else. I'm, I'm, I'm fresh out, man. If you, if you got this far and enjoyed this fucking video, and you're new, fucking subscribe, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Please <laughs> subscribe. By the time this video is out, I'm probably streaming. Or if not, I'm not streaming. I'm probably streaming the day after this video comes out. Either way, stay tuned. I feel, I love chilling with y'all, bro. And it'll mean the world to me if more y'all came to chill. Besides all that, nigga, I'm done for right now. I love y'all, man. I really do. Stay safe. And God bless. Peace. Okay.